Thank you, Kuba, for introduction. I hope that all of you understood him because I didn't, but uh, I hope that he said something that makes sense. Anyways, uh, my name is Tomislav Bilic. I am CEO at Inchu. Uh, we are a Magento solution company. And uh, uh, my talk today will be about uh, Magento in fashion industry. Uh, let's get something straight. Uh, I, am, I do not come from uh, uh, fashion world. I do, I'm not the fashion expert. I just lead a development company that had uh, some experience with working uh, with the clients that require a Magento uh, fashion e-commerce store. And uh, during this presentation, I would like to share some of these experiences with you, and I hope uh, they will be helpful to uh, to some of you. I'm, uh, my company is called Inchu. We are from uh, Croatia, and I hope that uh, most of you have been at least once at uh, our coast. We love uh, tourists for, from Poland and I hope that you will continue uh, to come. Uh, unfortunately, the city where we come from is not at the coast, it's at the north part of Croatia but, uh, called Osijek, but it's a very nice place to live. Uh, uh, we are Magento Gold Solution Partner, we have uh, 35 employees and uh, 15 of them are Magento certified, certified developers. Anyway, Let's not, this topic is not about uh, Inchu, it's about uh, fashion industry. And um, before we start, let's look at uh, where this uh, fashion industry, to be concrete, apparel and clothing is, is at, at the moment. If you took, take a look at this graph, it shows the uh, gr uh, annual growth rate in the next five years of, the each of some of the product categories. As you can see, apparel and accessories are the faster growing category of all. So for us, a development, uh, Magento developing companies, it means that uh, it's kind of a sweet spot to be in and it's a sweet spot to focus on. Uh, do, you, do you know which category sells the most right now? Yeah, somebody said con computer and consumer electronics. So right now, most of us purchase some computer or gadget uh, online, but Assumption is that uh, not all of us purchase clothing, uh, clothing at the moment. These are the, some of the data. Uh, these are some of the numbers of the growth rate in US. And uh, these numbers, uh, these are billion dollar fig figures. And as we can see, the e-commerce sales for apparel and accessories will be uh, over, will over double in, the, in these five years. And 2016 will be the last year where apparel L clothing is not the dominant product category. After that, it will be, be the category that achieves the most sales, okay, in US, but Europe will shortly follow. Let's get back to something more concrete. Uh, let me show you the story, how it went when um, as one of uh, our, when the first fashion client approached to us to build the Magento e-commerce stores. It was a fresh business and uh, the client uh, said to us, okay guys, I want that we start of course with design and uh, for uh, design I want something very unique, very original and something that will differentiate me from my competition. Okay, standard story, this is the type of the starting story we, we like and uh, we, we, um, uh, it turned out that we had a little bit of different vision what it actually meant uh, unique and original f uh, from the client. And, and uh, I, will, uh, I will pause this story uh, for a few slides and come back uh, afterwards to, to tell you how it ended. When we speak about design of uh, fashion e-commerce stores, usually there are, two types of, uh, there are two types of stores. First is uh, brand stores. Brand stores are uh, e-commerce stores that uh, sell a specific brand. So it's usually the manufacturer or designer, designer website. And you are selling, of course, only, only, uh, only his product. Like, look, let's look at the, some of the examples how uh, some of the, let's say, most selling ones look like. So here, this example shows Ralph Lauren. And as you can see, what we can notice. Very minimalistic, white background, dark text. You have, uh, let's say, certain category items. Just scan them, you will notice some similarities in the, in the, in the 
uh, slides afterwards. And there is a huge emphasis on images, models, and the products themselves. Next one, Gantt. Light background, dark text, you have a category, categorization and filtering options which you will, you know, uh, recall afterwards. Okay, some starting options and, the, and again, the emphasis on model and images. Now, diesel. As you know, this uh, brain targets uh, audience which is quite different than the first two, but still, you know, although they have a gray, uh, dark uh, header, the rest of the website is, uh, uh, let's say, ap uh, applies the same, same principles. And there is something crazy in, in the next slide. Rebecca Minhoff, where, you know, you will notice a large header that shows the category title. So, <coughs> you notice, you probably are assuming where uh, I'm getting at. And uh, let's take another, some, some other examples. Um, this is, a, this will show the examples of a department category. Department categories are the online fashion uh, stores that sell multiply brands. So, you know, if uh, you have a merchant that sells, um, you know, different br brands, this is the department. Uh, this is called the department store. Herods in UK, UK. What you notice? Light background, black text. Uh, but let's look at the, you know, kind of categorization a little. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the details. Gender selection, m women and men. Then there are a few uh, uh, product groups. And then there is filter by brand, by size, by color. And of course, emphasizes on images and models. Show bazaar, black and white again. Very similar. However, brand, they call designer instead of brand, but still similar. Uh, there is one, I tried to find one uh, Polish uh, example. I don't know how popular this one is in Poland, but uh, uh, it also follows the same principle, however, they have the touch, touch of one color. And there is the Zienko. This is the store that we developed, it has a black header uh, because it was part of the uh, previous identity. Also black and white and has a touch of one color. Okay, enough of, enough of examples. Uh, the, uh, when I now go back to the original, original story, it turned out that when a client, fashion client, asked us to develop something uh, unique, something, uh, uh, something original, and something that will differentiate uh, him from the rest of the, uh, his competition, uh, we had some other assumption what it, what it means. But later, when we uh, digged out uh, deeper into the you know, subject, uh, we, we uh, found out that, uh, we found out that uh, design in uh, fashion business is about details. It's about touches. You, when you are designing a fashion e-commerce store, you should not think to make some kind of uh, revolution in navigation, in the wireframing, etc. You should follow the industry standards, uh, standards that are already set, and uh, apply the touches that will make this store unique than the rest. Why to keep industry standards as, as there is? Imagine yourself buying a jacket. You will probably spend, I don't know, over 100 euros on it. You will make some research to see, to compare the prices, to compare the materials, to compare the quality. And you will open, let's say, five tabs in your browsers, or seven, let's say. And then, if one of them has a non-standard navigation, if you, need, if you have one that you will need to learn how to use this site, you will just close it and focus on the remaining six. And this is why uh, acquiring a new customers is very important for the fashion store. And this is why they all basically follow the same wireframing uh, wire uh, principle. So when a client says that he wants something original and something, uh, something new, he actually means about touches, not, something, uh, not, not some revolution. Why black and white? Why are all department stores mostly black and white? OK, we can say the fashion is black and white. You know that the fashion magazines are mostly black and white. But um, uh, the main reason lies because uh, the merchant that sells multiply brands are, is al also negotiating with, e with each specific brand. And these specific brands are very picky about to which businesses they will work with and to which online stores they will work with. So if you have a pink design with a Comic Sans font, Kelvin Klein might have a, <laughs> have a very second thoughts about working with you. 
you know, you could attract some of the kids' brands maybe, but uh, uh, these, let's say, business class, business class brands or uh, maybe more exquisite will probably not going to work with you. And this is why black and white ca comes into the picture, because you can't be more neutral than black and white. You, if you choose the black and white thing, uh, you do not uh, uh, lean toward any of the specific brand too much. So uh, this is why design is usually set up, that se set up this way. Uh, at Inchu, we promote a responsive approach when we are uh, designing the website. There will be a lot of topics, especially in a tech topic tomorrow, about the responsive uh, website, what it means, what it brings, etc. So I will not go too deeply in, into, uh, into the details, but um, I hope that you all know what responsive website is. It's a site that uh, on the, with the same HTML and CSS can uh, display differently on uh, different devices. The reason why we, uh, why we recommend responsive approach is uh, because of the tremendous growth of the, uh, of the mobile usage in, in, the, in the shopping experience, especially with fashion. Usage of mobile, sa mobile sales in fashion business is much above average than, uh, than the other categories. Uh, and the second, uh, pardon, this uh, example also showing is uh, showi showing that. So uh, with one of our clients, Zienko uh, from UK, uh, at the moment, in last quarter of 2013 of this year, as you can see, desktop visits are only 51%. In the next quarter, this quarter where we are now, we are expecting that for this site, there will be more mobile visits than the, than the desktop ones. And therefore, it is very important that uh, a website already has a prepared mobile strategy. Uh, Two reasons, two major reasons why also we promote responsive. Uh, when you build a responsive site, to be honest, it is much harder to build a responsive site than it is to build a standard. Standard uh, site that will display well just on one type of devices. But uh, maintenance of this website later on is much easier. It is much easier when you later on create one feature to um, uh, make adjustments in one place then it is to uh, make adjustments, let's say, on separate desktop, separate uh, smartphone, and se separate tablet, tablet theme. The second reason is that uh, Google recommends uh, the usage of uh, responsive in order uh, to display the same HTML on all the devices. When we say Google recommends something, it is very likely that it also means that he will favor this type of websites. So if he favors, specific type of website, they will have the better results in search engines, which is, I don't need to explain why, why it is important. Uh, for navigation, uh, at the start, it, se uh, it seems that it is very clear, uh, that it is very clear and very simple story. So these are five uh, navigation, uh, navigation elements that most of these websites have and I already mentioned uh, some of them, show by gender, show by category, show by brand, show by color, and, uh, and uh, show by size. <laughs> okay, uh, so, and there are also some more like uh, sh show by price or show by uh, occasion you can find on some, on, on some sites, but these are uh, most standard ones. Unless, for example, the store is selling only women products, then you will not find probably show by gender. Uh, although it seems very simple, uh, there are huge challenges into setting this system right. Uh, for, uh, huge challenges from development perspective. One of the uh, challenge that we had the most uh, difficulty with was uh, setting a proper show by size uh, show by size system that will make sense to the buyer that will make se sense to the customer. Why? Let's say that a website uh, pro uh, sells multiple brands. Each of these brands is coming from a different country. You know, you have Italian brands, German brands, uh, etc. And uh, each brand has its own, you know, price, uh, pardon, sizing system. And uh, at the same time, this site probably has over 1,000 SKUs, you know, maybe a maybe couple of thousands. Uh, so most of most of the times 
Well, every time we, we, we build such a website, we were communicating with the RP system. In the RP system, there was always the same, the same issue. The RP system always saved the native values, native values of the product uh, uh, in the system, and we, we pulled, uh, we, we pulled the, the, the data out. So uh, the challenge was always to set up the navigation system where show by size will be uh, clear to the customer and display the value that he expects. So if the store is in UK, the customer expects either UK sizing, sizing measures, or the standard ones. I don't know if this one has a specific name, but uh, 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 this is what the client this is what the client expects. And uh, the solution was to build always some type of mapping uh, these values these values to the ones that, uh, that, 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 that are here. And as you know, they are not always secured. And this is why the fashion websites have a, a very strong problem about um, an, a percentage of returns uh, of orders which are placed with the wrong, uh, with the wrong size selection. Some uh, they range from 8% to 25% uh, in some cases. Of course, as a developing company, you need to build the shopping experience uh, going, going s smoothly. But uh, the other component, once you, once you do that, the other component uh, of gr growing the business is, uh, to engage, is to engage your customers. Uh, there are very different ways uh, different way to, do, to do so. I read one of the uh, fashion merchants uh, wrote on one blog uh, saying, that uh, his goal is not only to sell in this business, his goal is to be in this business. So uh, he spends a lot of effort into writing uh, articles about fashion trends, about fashion events. Uh, he's also organizing some of the fashion events. So he's really uh, in the, uh, he's really active in the, in, in the fashion community and therefore community recognizes him, recognizes his brand and will, uh, uh, most likely lean forward to purchase from them. Very important uh, strategy uh, uh, needs, to be, uh, needs to be set for personalization. So if I Googled for a diesel t-shirt, I came to your site and purchased a diesel t-shirt. And a couple of weeks after, I went to your site and purchased a diesel shoes. And then if I come for the third time and you don't have a special strategy for me, then you are doing something wrong. You, your site should know at that time that I'm probably leaning forward to buy, I don't know, some diesel, some diesel product. And you should already know how to communicate with me in this, uh, in this event. And uh, all of the clients that we are working, film, uh, we are working with are uh, spending a lot of energy uh, on uh, creating the personalization strategies. Uh, when we speak about engagement, one of the, some of the, let's say, rookie merchants uh, promote discounts too fast. So when they promote discounts too fast, uh, what is happening is actually that, uh, uh, that uh, the customers and the visitors are getting used to this pattern. And after a while, they just start, they, they just start to wait and uh, they are just starting to wait for the discount period. They will less and less buy the products at full price. They will wait for the uh, discount period because it is expected at, at that point. And so this is why uh, uh, they recommend to uh, use more of the promotion, more of the incentive, like uh, incentives like awards or uh, free shipping or, or something like this than actual discount on the products. Because you don't want to promote a uh, sales period too much and uh, so that customers get uh, used to it. And one of the very important things is uh, to use social media for these engagements. And um, many of the merchants are using social media like um, they stay on the lever when they just, uh, you know, publish some products and wait for sales. The social media is not about creating sales, it's about creating an image sales will come afterwards. So communication, communication with, your, with your audience is uh, extremely important in social media, but don't push selling too much because 
you will lose this uh, audience. Uh, and each of these customers um, always it was always saying that uh, it is very important to be active in the offline community. Uh, let's look at uh, one of the examples that uh, NetPorter NetPorter uses. Uh, they call event they call uh, they call a window shopping. So NetPorter has their own existing offline stores, uh, and a uh, couple of times a year they close close the store so it's locked you can't come in then they just uh, close the windows and place the physical images in the uh, and place the physical images uh, uh, on the windows in front so what what is uh, the idea the idea is when the when you are passing and you're seeing the image you put out your smartphone or tablet point at this image and then some augmented reality starts to pop up of course, pardon, you need to download the app first. Then the augmented reality starts to pop up. You can see the models, I don't know, walking around uh, these uh, skirts or whatever. And then, as you can see here, actually purchase it. And during these days, they uh, uh, give a lot of awards, a lot of, um, you know, a lot, a lot of added value, but they don't discount products. They give a lot of values. And then also, this also happens during the night when uh, the shop would normally be closed. But it also exists uh, during, during the whole night. The value of this is not only that uh, the value of this does not lie only into the sales they made they, they, that day, but uh, bringing something new, something uh, you know, flashy, something fancy uh, to the market made everyone write a lot of uh, blogs, write a lot of topics uh, about it. It was all over the media, all over the, all over the fashion magazines, that it was really a crazy event. I'm not sure that it takes, you know, too much cost to build something like this. I believe they didn't spend a lot of money on that. But the uh, uh, gain from viral marketing, I believe, was kind of awesome, awesome for that. Uh, with other, with other, uh, with other merchants, it is um, uh, some of the events that uh, they can organize is uh, different pop-up stores, different, uh, different, uh, you know, fish. Uh, fashion exhibitions or, or something similar. This is a website that uh, we developed. We didn't start, uh, uh, we didn't start working with this client fast. So when this client approached us, it was, um, let's say, at the end of last year, uh, they were already working with somebody else. The ZNCO client is from uh, United Kingdom, from London specifically. Uh, she has a couple of physical all those physical stores in London and a uh, couple of years ago she went online and right now uh, the online sales are taking my, uh, taking the higher percentage of her total total sales when we uh, uh, when we started when we started working she was using a magento community and there were some let's say issues with the with the insul installations, uh, the, you know there was not a good caching mechanism. The site was having uh, trouble uh, uh, with the with the performance, and, and during let's say certain peaks, the site was the site was very slow, and uh, this this was extremely um, let's say uh, the Christmas period was uh, very uh, uh, very problematic, very problematic to the client. But uh, after that was over, we started to build a new website. The goals of the website was to were to uh, start with responsive strategy. I told you the reasons. The mobile visitors are uh, uh, playing much higher role. Uh, we wanted to move to enterprise and uh, use Solar Search better. Uh, we started the code revamp. Well, actually, we uh, built the whole system on the new installation uh, and uh, uh, and basically imported the. Uh, precise data from the old system to new one. Caching and improved navigation. The, ah, shame, you can see the image. Uh, anyway, uh, the, after we uh, completed everything, and once the new site was, is live right now for a couple of month, months, uh, the conversion rates, uh, the total conversion rate increased by 44%, and the tablet conversion rate increased uh, even higher. Uh, the display 
on uh, mobile devices is now much, much better, and the experience that the customer gets on mobile devices is now much better than it was, than it was before. Okay, these conversion rates are not only because of the responsive, the site is faster, the, the site is right now more stable, and the, uh, uh, and the user experience is better than it, than it was before. Uh, uh, improving internal search also gained a lot of results because uh, uh, visits with site search uh, increased. We placed uh, search, search uh, position in much more dominant, dominant place and much more apparent place, so people started to use it more. And so, uh, since, it got also, uh, since it also featured a couple of um, uh, suggestions, uh, revenue increased by 200%. Uh, 200, 200%. And results from, uh, results from uh, Google Organic also grow, grow a lot. Did it happen because we used responsive and we used, uh, let's say, uh, standards they, um, they promote in their, uh, in their search engine optimization guidelines? Uh, we believe it, is, uh, it has something to do with it, but it, it was very important that only in three months uh, uh, organic search increased increase to this level. Anyway, suffice to say, right now the client is very happy and we are working on other activities to, um, to improve these results, these results even further. And uh, in order to do so, we always you know, have to measure uh, what we have done. Uh, certain, uh, certain assumptions always need to be placed at the start. And some, uh, when you're starting with uh, the project of this type, you assume something uh, uh, at first, like the new design will bring more revenue. The uh, responsive design will bring better conversion rates, etc. But only after you test it, uh, you know what, what will be the real truth. And this is one example uh, of a uh, case study from one US company called Blue, Blue Acorn. Uh, they're working, uh, they working with a site uh, with a smart full site and uh, the idea was actually to determine ah okay never, never, uh, I will skip then this part because uh, you can't see the images anyway the uh, there were two category page variations uh, one was something that you will call very standard category page and one was very uh, let's say not so one was also not so standard and uh, uh, what they uh, concluded after uh, placing the A-B split testing is that uh, the one that looked very ordinary, very boring, actually sold much more, actually sold much more. So although the client assumed that uh, this kind of uh, uh, fancy layout will, will bring better revenue, they also as a company assumed that uh, the bet this, uh, this twisted layout will bring, bring better conversion, the results shows totally opposite. The visitors purchased more on a, let's say, more standard layout. I'm sorry that you can't see it, but uh, it, 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 it is a good example of why measuring needs to be in place. Uh, questions? Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I will try to open your PDF. To ah. show the, the pictures, okay. because uh, okay. I think it was just a problem with Keynote. Okay, sure. Thank you for the presentation. I have a quite a technical question. Uh, how does uh, such modern features like uh, infinite scroll works in uh, fashion industry? So there are different opinions about this. Do you know like Twitter, Facebook interface, when you have no pages, you just scroll? And how does it really work for fashion? Did you try it? Uh, you mean the endless scroll feature? Yeah, yeah, endless uh, scroll. The endless scroll, okay. I don't know, I will have to measure it. Okay. <laughs> I will have to measure it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's becoming trendy because you have a lot of uh, these cool JavaScript libraries and people are uh, using it more and more. It is convenient, it is convenient for the, uh, for, the, for the visitor because he doesn't need to, you know, flip pages, but there is the SEO uh, disadvantage. And then, uh, you know, I assume, my initial, uh, I would need to research it deeper, but uh, my assumption is that uh, Maybe the search engine optimization could be penalized for that. And, uh, you know, 
whether, uh, whether the conversion rate kind of uh, are higher than the actual disadvantage, this would have to be measured. You know, I can't tell you immediately the answer. I, it is cool feature, it is cool feature. My initial reaction was that I would not use it, but I, this is my, my just opinion, I would need to measure it to make sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, just, uh, just to close. So this is the this is the image that I wanted uh, to show. So as you can see, as you can see, uh, the client and the company kind of try to experiment with a, a category like this because uh, they wanted to uh, feature one of the products and make it larger, and then the rest of the grid would just follow like float uh, everywhere else. But this one, which which is more standard more what customers are used to actually sold 17%, actually sold 17% more. So after uh, having a, you know, they, after performed test, they just, you know, abandoned this approach and uh, continue to use, to use this one. Okay, thank you. Tomislav, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry for the pictures. No, but no worries, no worries. <laughs>